Oh, hey there. So just doing a little summer cleaning in the office. You know, summer is a good time to make changes. We're renovating the main office. Take a look. I'll show you a little video of that, just a little sweep through. We're also adding an additional administrator. We're going to be welcoming Mr. Ward this school year. So it's a lot of change this school year, just like every year. You know, one of the most quoted persons in American history is the great baseball player Yogi Berra. And he said once, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Stated another way, when you need a change, make a change. Every school year brings an opportunity for change. Take our freshmen, for instance. They're going to be making a big change. They have a chance for a fresh start, which is why they're called freshmen, in case you didn't know. I had an opportunity too, and it's not a big opportunity, just a small opportunity there to make a change. So I took Yogi Bear's advice and took it. Let me show you what I mean. Take a look here. Let me show you. Look at this massive aquarium, guys. This thing is about 75 gallons, and I was lucky enough to get it for free. And now I've got the opportunity to decide what I'm going to put in it. I've always wanted an office pet, so I'm going to make a decision to get a pet for the office. What do you guys think? What would you put in it as an office pet? Stick around and I'm gonna walk you through the process of how I'm making that decision. You know, some decisions are important and consequential and some aren't. So getting a pet for the office is not a very consequential decision. But every decision you make, when you make that choice, you give up other choices. So it's always important to kind of think through the choices that you are making. I got the option to get in a pet for the office. So what kind of decision making process am I going to use? There are lots of possible choices. I know because I've done the research. Whenever you make a choice, it's best to have some kind of process. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but random choices generally don't work out to your advantage. In the coming school year, you're going to have lots of opportunities to make many choices. For instance, you might choose a school club to join. And I would encourage you to make that choice. That's a very positive and good choice to make. But think about which one is going to be best for you. In the process of choosing an office pet, I'm going to go through a decision making process I call GOAT. So not only does GOAT stand for the greatest of all time, but it also stands for goals, options, analysis, and take action. It's a very simple process. Follow along and I think you're going to get it. It's pretty simple. Whatever process you end up choosing to make a decision, I encourage you to choose one so you can avoid random choices and make choices that are in your best interest. Let me show you this one. To be the goat, you must think like the goat. And of course by that I mean the greatest of all time. In this process, my goal in utilizing the aquarium is to put something manageable, interesting, entertaining, and awesome in it. So if that's my goal, I can start considering some options. For my first option, I considered an actual goat. I've always wanted a pet goat. Pygmy goats are small, cute, and able to dispose of all kinds of unwanted material. But they are loud. They are apparently very needy and demand lots of attention. They are funny, but they like to get into trouble. And of course, even a small goat wouldn't fit in, the, in this aquarium. Like, who does that? You might say that goats are a lot like freshmen. So I quickly eliminated that option. It's just not manageable. It seems that sometimes when faced with choices, we don't always give it much thought. And if we considered alternatives for just a minute, we might come up with a much better decision. For my second option, I considered fish. It is an aquarium after all. And so keeping fish is an obvious choice. I've had fish before, and one problem with them is you really can't do anything with them except sit and watch them. You can't handle or pet them, which I like. For me, however, there just isn't any wow factor in keeping fish in an aquarium. It's not awesome. No offense to any fish keepers out there. I've had them before. It isn't that interesting to me. And it's a lot of ongoing maintenance. So using the goat method, I eliminated fish as one of the options. For my next option, I considered a rat. Rats are common pets, and I've never had one before, although I have had hamsters and mice. Rodents, in general, are extremely curious and interactive. They can be very funny and playful. They're quite intelligent and can be taught some amazing tricks, but they're very creepy. They just give some people a terrible case of the heebie-jeebies. They also smell bad. All rodents do. Another problem is that they're prone to escape. As someone who has had rodents before, I can attest to this fact. I don't think it would be good at all, so I eliminated this option as well. My fourth option to consider is a unicorn. 
For those of you who have been in my office before, you know that fits with the theme. There are already lots of unicorns in my office. You know they are heckin' cool. I think if I had an actual unicorn in my tank, I might just never leave the office. But their existence is highly suspect. They might be imaginary, but you can't prove a negative, so who knows? Legend has it they would also be too big. Much like a goat with one horn. And I'm not sure I could handle all that magical stuff. I'm pretty rational, so I had to eliminate this choice too. This brings me to option five, a dragon. Probably the only thing equally as awesome as a unicorn is a dragon. They are very cool. If I got a dragon that was small enough, it could fit in the aquarium. Unlike fish, I could take it out and interact with it and show it to people. So that makes it more interesting and entertaining to me. The care wouldn't be too difficult. They are reptiles. So if I missed some feedings on the weekend, it would be fine. There we go. We got a choice, a winner, a dragon. I've considered multiple options using the goat strategy and how it matched my goal and dragon it is. Huh, a dragon. <laughs> um, that's, no, that's too big. A dragon. No, 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 that, that's still too big. And venomous. A dragon. Uh, uh, yeah, just make sure you... growl and bark on your dog. Yep, they do. That one I have too bad. I'll you. Super friendly. Uh, let, I should let them, as soon as we get this up, they hope they do. Well, no. Of course, a bearded dragon. You know, I've always wanted a bearded dragon, and this looks like the perfect opportunity to get one. It fits all the requirements of being manageable, interesting, entertaining, and awesome. But while they are manageable, there is a whole lot of setup that's required. So I'm going to be putting together a series of videos on how to set up a tank to house a bearded dragon. Oh, and we're going to need a name too. So if you have a good suggestion for a name for our office pet, the bearded dragon, go ahead and put it in the comments down below. And if we get a bunch of good suggestions, maybe we'll have a vote once school starts back. Thank you so much for tuning in to this summertime video here at Lafayette High School. Students will be seeing you soon, so keep enjoying your summer. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.